Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be talking and reviewing Pac-Man 99 for your Nintendo Switch. So yesterday, we got a really nice surprise in the launch of a Battle Royale version of a classic arcade game, which by the title, I guess you can guess already, is based off of Pac-Man. And just to set the stage a little bit, I am a huge Pac-Man fan. I have a Miss Pac-Man countercade, and I pretty much have the game on each and every console that I own currently, and I have it actually multiple times already on the Switch. So when they announced this game, I immediately pre-downloaded it, and I was pretty much testing each and every hour till the game went live. And after trying out a few test matches, I decided to drop the money and buy pretty much all the DLC for Pac-Man 99 so that today we could do this video and I could let all of you know what's worth it and what's not. So contrary to a normal review, we'll spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the video looking over what makes Pac-Man 99 different from the base version of Pac-Man and what actually I liked about this version. But then we will spend a lot of time also talking about the DLC so that for anyone shopping around out there, you know what you should spend your money on. Now, just before we jump into it, as usual, don't forget that if you do end up liking this content, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now, just to get started, I don't think we have to go too deep into explaining what the base mechanics of the original version of Pac-Man is. But just in case, here's a really, really quick breakdown. In the base version of Pac-Man, the general idea is that you want to clear the maze by chomping down on all the pellets on screen while not getting eaten by any of the ghosts that are basically chasing you around that same maze. To help you along the way, you have power pellets at each corner of the maze. If you eat one of those power pellets, you have a certain amount of time where you can turn the tide on the ghosts and munch down on them instead. And in the base version of Pac-Man, it's this exact same formula, rinse, repeat, each time you clear a maze, you jump into another maze and the things keep going quicker and quicker as the game evolves. Now in Pac-Man 99, however, the mechanics get shifted around quite a bit. The base mechanics are there and you do recognize the game very well as a Pac-Man game. However, the general sense of the way you play out the game changes quite a bit. First of all, the point of the game null is no longer to clear the maze, but is rather replaced with basically a loop, keeping you always in the same maze, but constantly switching things up. Now, the way they do this is they create a gameplay loop within the exact same maze. Basically, as you eat pellets, what that does is it makes the fruit at the center of the stage spawn quicker. When you eat the power pellet, it still flips things on its head and lets you eat the ghosts. However, Every now and then you have to eat a fruit to have the pellets respawn, including the power pellets at the corner of the stage. And basically you will rinse and repeat this to stay alive for as long as possible by constantly making those power pellets respawn over and over again. Now the way that they spin this into a battle royale is that basically to affect other players, what you need to do is you need to eat the ghost. As you eat the ghost, it spawns enemy or ghost Pac-Man in the opponent's stages. Now to add depth to this mechanic, they've actually created a sort of combo type mechanic called a ghost train. If you look at the right and left columns on the stage, you will see tiny images of ghosts. As you eat those, what it does is it adds after images to one of the main ghosts on the screen. And the next time you eat a power pellet, Basically, if you eat that ghost that has a after image behind it, you'll be able to combo into basically eating not only that ghost, but each after image counting as an extra ghost you're eating. That counter can easily get above 50 ghosts if you plan out things properly. And the general consensus is that if you combo into an enormous amount of ghosts, it's much harder for an enemy player to deal with 50 enemy images hitting the screen at once than dealing with one or two jumping on the screen at a time. By the way, at the beginning, what those enemy images do is that basically if you hit them with Pac-Man, they slow you down. As the game progresses, you will actually get red enemy Pac-Man, which will act like extra ghosts on the screen actually able to kill you. Now, the last thing to round off the new mechanics is you actually have access to power-ups for Pac-Man himself, which can be activated by hitting any which one of the face buttons. Basically, Y will be your standard setup, which will make Pac-Man average speed and average strength. 
You have an option that will make Pac-Man stronger, which is if you're being assailed by multiple ghost images at once, it'll allow you to basically knock through them a little quicker and not be slowed down as much. If not, if the coast is clear, you have a speed up option, which will just basically make Pac-Man all that quicker. However, if he does hit a ghost image, he is weaker than usual and will be slowed more than usual. And lastly, there is what I found the most useful option, the train option, which if you're about to eat a ghost train, will increase the multiplier quicker, giving you even more ghost images to attack your enemies. Now, a huge point of being successful in Pac-Man 99 will be adapting to be able to switch through these different power-ups based on each situation you're confronted with. And finally, you also have the right joystick, which will basically be your targeting mechanic. Now you can target in four of different ways. You can choose between random, which will basically send your enemies to random players on the stage. Secondly, you can be in hunter mode, which will basically send your enemies to generally whichever player is doing best currently. Next, you also have counter mode, which will be basically targeting the player who is targeting you. And lastly, the knockout mode, which will basically be targeting the player that is in the worst current situation and closest to being knocked out. You can also select manually the player you want to target with the L and R triggers, although I found this quite difficult during a match because of everything that you have to keep track of. So I do think that most people will be using those presets. Now, ultimately, if that sounds like quite a lot, don't worry, it actually integrates quite well and after only, I would say, three or four matches, it all really gelled together pretty well and I got a pretty good idea of what I needed to be doing to be successful in Pac-Man 99. So don't be scared by the lengthy explanation, it actually, and that is maybe one of the first really positive things about the game, it all gels and comes together very, very well and the game is actually really easy to understand what you actually get into it. Now, not only are all the mechanics really well integrated, but I find it solves pretty much the only issue I really had with Mario 35. Now, I know this is not a direct replacement for Mario 35, and it's a total different type of gameplay, but nonetheless, it is sort of a rehash of the same type of formula as Mario 35 and Tetris 99 before that. And basically, the problem I had with, for example, Mario 35 is that if you wound up at the last minute with a couple of really experienced players, some matches I've seen last 15 to 20 minutes, which is really too long for a Battle Royale rapid fire type game. In Pac-Man 99, there is almost no way that a match is pretty much going to last more than five minutes, even with experienced players, because the spawning of those dead Pac-Man, like I said, the Pac-Man at the end that are red that act like extra ghosts, really make sure that once you get down to those last 20 players, the matches pretty much end within 30 to 60 seconds after that point. And just to drive the point home of how awesome and addictive this gameplay can actually become, when I sat down to film this review for all of you, I scheduled to film for about an hour to an hour and a half of gameplay maximum and then sit down and film the review. We're now past midnight and I started at 9 o'clock because unfortunately I wound up recording for over three hours of gameplay, not because I felt like I needed to for the video or anything like that, because this will ultimately probably be a 10 to 15 minute video, but because I just couldn't put down the controller. I just wanted to play another match, another match, and try to get a win out of Pac-Man 99. Ultimately, I'm still chasing after that first win because my top finishing position has been number three so far, but don't worry, it's not far off. I'm going to be getting that in the next couple of days. But now I think it's time that we jump to the DLC because that's pretty much it for my base review of Pac-Man 99 and ultimately it's a free to play game. So the best thing you can do is download the game, give it a couple of matches and see if the gameplay is for you or not. But if any of this resonated with you, I think that this should be a game that definitely everyone should at least download and give it a try. But now, as I said, let's move on to the DLC. So I'm going to break down the DLC into three separate categories. You have what's called the deluxe pack that is currently $30 and you just get everything in that pack. After that, you have the extra game mode pack that is $15. And basically what you get in that is you get all the different game modes unlocked and you also get a few exclusive Pac-Man based themes. And lastly, at $2 each, you have all the different cosmetic themes that you can download piece by piece, one by one. 
Now, first, just to start off, just so you understand, when I'm talking about DLC, these are all optional things. The base game is fully functional in its online mode without purchasing a thing. So when you're playing the free game, you are playing the complete free game of Pac-Man 99, although you don't have access to the alternate game modes. And actually, let's jump right into that. The first pack that we're going to talk about is that $15 game pack mode, because I do think that this one offers the best blend of maybe a little bit of everything for different people. So basically, if you purchase this $15 pack, the main focus of this, I think, for most people will be the fact that you can now play the game offline, because if it wasn't already clear and I did specify it, Pac-Man 99 is an online game mode only when it's in its free form. To have access to what's called the CPU battle mode, which is ultimately Pac-Man 99 in an offline mode, you actually have to purchase at minimum the $15 extra game mode pack. But let me be clear, make sure to try the free base game before buying the extra game mode pack, because even the extra game modes are simply modifications of the Pac-Man 99 game mode. So if you don't like the free mode, you will be guaranteed not to probably like any of the alternate modes unlocked. There is no regular Pac-Man that is unlocked in this game mode pack. If you're looking for the regular classic Pac-Man, look at the Namco collection. There are plenty of ways to get it on the Nintendo Switch, but that is not what is unlocked in this pack. Now, the other thing that you also get to unlock in the base Pac-Man 99 mode is also the ability to make custom games, where you can basically set a six-digit pin, and everyone who inputs that six-digit pin within the matchmaking time frame will be added into your game. I actually find that this is a really interesting option for either playing with friends or even for anyone who would eventually want to set up a streaming of this game to play with viewers. The only small caveat is this is only accessible to other people who have also purchased the pack of at least the additional game modes. So unfortunately, someone who has the free version of the game will not be able to join your custom game. And lastly, to round out the other two game modes, we have the first one, which is called Score Attack, which is basically the exact same formula as Pac-Man 99, but the only point is you are not competing against anyone. The only point is to go around the loop of the stage and basically the, get the highest score available by pretty much trying to combo as many ghost trains as possible with endless play basically as long as you don't die. And the second gameplay mode that is unlocked is the blind time attack. And this mode is the mode that resembles the most the original Pac-Man game. Because in this mode, the objective becomes once again to clear the maze, however, to do it as much as possible in a given time frame. There are ways to extend or freeze your timer by eating different ghosts and creating ghost trains once again. But ultimately, I do think that this is the least interesting of the three types of gameplay. Now, the reason why I think this $15 pack is most interesting is because it gives you a little bit of everything. Number one, it unlocks all the game modes, but it also gives you eight alternate skins based around Pac-Man. Now, these won't be the crazy alternate skins like I'll be showing throughout the video uh, based around Galaga, Dig Dug, and all the other uh, Namco franchises, but you still get eight different themes all based around the basic Pac-Man game. Like you get a Pac-Man Lego maze, you get a Pac-Man maze that looks more like a 3D or 2.5D Pac-Man maze. And at $15 for unlocking the full game and having about eight themes thrown in, the price does feel quite fair. Now, for players who know that they're only going to be playing the base game and only online, but do want a slight visual upgrade to change the monotony from game to game, then I would say those are the only players who should be investing in individual themes. Because at $2 a theme, it actually adds up pretty quick. So if you want just one or two here or there, it makes sense to buy them individually and not invest in any of the packs. But if you're looking at buying one or two this week, one or two next week and so forth and so forth, I'm telling you right away, look right away towards the deluxe pack. The only people who should be buying individual visual themes is someone who knows they're playing only the base game. And on top of that is only going to be buying maybe two or three themes maximum. And that jumps us to the deluxe pack. And although I do feel that $30 is a bit steep 
for an ultimately free to play game. What you actually get in that pack for someone who wants access to everything does make sense at $30. Now, first of all, you get everything that's unlocked in the $15 game mode pack. So everything that's in that pack, you get in the deluxe pack as well. But not only that, you get 20 additional themes to use on your Pac-Man game, including some that are exclusive to this deluxe pack, meaning that basically there are some themes that you actually cannot buy individually for $2. So for someone who wants the extra game modes and is even looking at grabbing even one or two themes, I'm telling you right away, don't waste your money, jump right away to the deluxe pack. However, if you're looking just for the best value for your money, I would say that the $15 game mode pack is probably the best option unless you know you're only going to be playing online. That is basically what I am coming to by talking about all the DLC is that $30 does feel steep, but don't get pushed into buying everything individually because you'll see that everything included in the $30 base pack, if you start buying it individually, will cost you over $60. But ultimately, after talking about all this DLC, don't forget the game is free to play. If all you want to do is play Pac-Man 99 and have tons of fun, just download it for free. You don't need to buy any DLC at all. And ultimately, I'm going to say for myself, if I hadn't been doing this for a YouTube video and to test it out for all of you, I would have personally bought the $15 pack. I do really find that price for quality, it is what's offering the best options. Because like I said, it's unlocking all the game modes and the eight different Pac-Man based themes is enough to break up the monotony probably for 90% of people out there. So at that, it's pretty much a wrap up for my video on Pac-Man 99. Now, I hope this helped a lot of you out there get an idea of what this game is and also whether or not you should be investing in the DLC. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below and let me know if you're going to be playing the game online. Who knows? We might be playing against each other without even knowing it. And as usual, and as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you do like this content and you want to see more, please hit the like button. It really does help out a lot. Also, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.